The next thing we want to cover are actors. You know about data races, right? So I'll explain how it works, but basically it's a very unlikely bug that may happen if you access uh, the same variable from two, uh, two threads at the same time. I don't think it would actually happen a lot or at all in your app unless you are doing something crazy, but let's see how it works and why would uh, you need something like actors obviously to fix it. So let's go to our fourth project. Let's enable uh, the screen here. Let's, uh, let's see how it looks like. So basically um, just a screen here. Uh, let's go to our view model. We have a class called bank account, right? Um, and uh, we call it, uh, if we, you call it deposits, we just increment the balance by a hundred. Now, uh, how would a data race happen? I have a neat diagram here, so I'll show it to you in a minute. Let's say here, right? So this is how it would happen. Uh, here we have this, our uh, balance variable, right? Let's, uh, let's say this one, and we have deposit function. Uh, here, how it would work. So we have a thread A and a thread B. Thread A calls deposit. It, uh, let's actually uh, look at the code as well. So uh, it calls balance, it, uh, it is on line nine, right? Um, we read the balance, it's currently zero, right? And uh, we start to um, sum balance, uh, balance and 100, so we uh, put them together to get 100. But at the same time, the next uh, happens. Uh, at the same time, the thread B also calls deposit, it also read the balance. Since we didn't write to the balance uh, yet, it is still zero. So uh, we get zero here. Then we write from the thread a hundred since we summed up zero and hundred, we got hundred, obviously. Uh, we write it down here and it is hundred. But then uh, this operation finishes as, as well. And uh, since we got zero here, added a hundred, we got a hundred. So we also write a hundred here. So uh, what, we, uh, what we have is that we call deposit twice we expect um, balance to be equal to 200, but actually what we have is 100. This is logical issue and uh, a very unexpected bug, which is uh, kind of ha hard to debug. Now, um, I put up this project just to show you how it might happen. I just put a for loop with a thousand iterations. I got a global queue here and a main queue here. Let's, uh, let's run and see how it works. So we already have it running here. If I tap it, I will see the following happens. So what we expect is uh, to have thousand iterations times two times here times a uh, hundred bucks uh, should equal to around 200,000. Let's see how, if it's the case. Uh, you see that on the screen we have uh, 184, 200, so much less than 200,000. Uh, 200, In the console, we actually see something that is not that bad, which is only hundred bucks uh, less than we expect. And the, and the console, we actually get the final number. But as you see, UI is not working, logic is not working, nothing is working. By the way, you have to, in order to track data races, you have to enable th thread sanitizer here. So you have to edit your scheme, go to diagnostics, enable thread sanitizer. If you do that, you'll see an error as I see here as well. So we see that basically we got this, uh, we got this error here. Now let's see uh, how we would fix it. How we would fix it is very sim simple, uh, is using actors. Actors is are very, very similar to classes. They are also reference types, but the main feature is that they make sure that um, each member of the class, like variables or functions, are accessed um, from only one thread at a time. So they make the access exclusive. So for example, if thread A, um, if we look at the diagram as well, if we go here, here. So uh, they make sure that this thing never happens. Thread A would start um, calling deposit and thread B would be forced to wait until thread A finishes its business here. So this situation would never occur. There is a downside. Now everything on this class is actually asynchronous. So uh, this, uh, this function and this function are asynchronous. First thing we see is that uh, bank details here uh, become asynchronous and we have to actually uh, first make this whole thing uh, in an asynchronous context like with task and we have to wait for it here. So let's try to run it. Okay, this error is gone. 
But let's think about it. Do we actually want uh, this bank details uh, to be asynchronous? Actually not since it's just a static string. Uh, it will never change and we don't really care if it's accessed like by 100 threads at the same time. So um, how we would exclude it, uh, let's say from this um, actor rule. It's very simple with a non-isolated keyword that we can put before things we want to exclude from this rule. So, so this thing is no longer asynchronous and what we can actually do is just leave it as it was before. So this thing is actually important, so we actually want to wait for it and we would have to uh, make this function asynchronous for that. And uh, same here, async, wait, um, here it's also wait, it's also sync. Let's go back, uh, this thing doesn't uh, still doesn't work, so here we would need task to wait for it inside here and we have to wait for it here and here actually. Let's actually change it here to the following, we just will use task.sleep, that would be the same as using dispatch queue to wait here. And um, yeah, let's see if it works. So obviously, as, as we did before, we have to make this guy. Um, so we have to mark this guy with a wait. Task is already here, that's great. The other part, uh, what I want to do is mark this whole pass as a main actor, so view model. Let's see how it works right now. Okay, so you see, now it works very stable. And as you can see, uh, the animation for the UI also work flawlessly thanks uh, thank to main actor uh, tag that we added. Okay, that's it for this video. I hope it was useful for you and subscribe to not miss a video like that. Ciao!